Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. I am currently listening to Drunkish by Stephanie Wilder-Taylor. I really like Stephanie. And this is a book about leaving alcohol. It's called A A Memoir of Loving and Leaving Alcohol. And I really dig her take on it. She's a funny person, and I love having her voice actually in my ear reading it to me. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Wow. Nice. Yeah. What you're hearing are the sounds of people everywhere putting on Bomba socks, underwear, and T-shirts made from absurdly soft materials that feel like plush clouds. Yeah, that plush. And the best part? For every item you purchase, Bombas donates another to someone facing homelessness. Bombas, big comfort for everyone. Go to bombas.com slash Wondery and use code Wondery for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash Wondery, code Wondery. When you choose Organic Valley, not only will you be enjoying great tasting dairy, you'll help to save over 1,600 small organic family farms who are protecting over 400,000 acres of organic farmland and all the plants and animals that call it home. This is dairy you can feel good about. It's great tasting, high quality organic dairy, ethically sourced from small organic family farms. To find Organic Valley Dairy near you, visit ov.coop. That's ov.coop. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well, go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe so that way you always get your episodes. But enough of that. Let's get right back into the episode. It was kind of in the basement, though, Feline's, wasn't it? In New York, wasn't it? On the bottom floor, you had to go to, like, the basement floor of that shopping center? I did not know. So my only experience with Feline's basement was at the Danbury Fair Mall. And it was its oh. own, like, street-level basement, which is... Kind of oh, like I used to go to the Union position. Square one in New York. Oh, it was actually in the basement. By the way, yeah, I mean, it was like on the basement level. I think, I think it was. There were like three department stores. It was oh. Filene's. I think it was TJ Maxx. I don't remember the other, but God damn it, those were some good days. You know, else in Times Square, that when they built that big movie center, that's like five a five story mall, and they had a big movie theater at the top, and they had a Chili's right under it. Oh my mm-hmm. God! Me and my girlfriend would go there and just party mm. we'd binge at chilies and then we'd binge in the movie theater and watch three movies god those were the days that's that's a great time and then go to Alien's basement afterward on the street right yeah those were our sofi days okay so um that's sutton, where you have the white party filing's basement sutton, yeah sutton gives a nut button everything's kind of stained because it's filing some people go there after chilies and movies <laughs> okay, so um, Sutton gives a kind of a monologue about this guy, and she's really looking for real love, which we all know isn't true, because she would have to give up her alimony if she found it. <laughs> so don't look for – stay single. That's my right. advice. She's Even like, for poor people, stay single. You know what? I've realized it's not important to me as dating as, as I thought it was. What I really want to do, what I really want to date right now is my business and also my horse, Santos. He's kind of hot. Have you ever seen a hot horse before? I think I have one. <laughs> okay, so then Garcelle and Sutton, um, what? Who cares? Okay, so Kyle and Mauricio now are having a super awkward conversation. And she's like, So I heard that you think that our party was in the parking lot because Santiago uh, said that he asked you, and like, how are you guys doing it in SoFi? And you said, I don't know, maybe it's in the parking lot. I mean, I told you it wasn't in the parking lot, Mauricio. <laughs> uh, like, I don't know if I actually said that to him or not because, like, I don't know, I'm opening up offices of a business across the world. So, like, the location of the dance floor is like not huge priority, but like, yeah, maybe I said that. I had no idea. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, it uh. really shows that like this is a sen- sentimental day. <laughs> and like I told him that this party's not a parking lot. He like he doesn't even love me anymore. <laughs> and then we see a clip of them at home with him kind of getting stuff ready in the kitchen. He's cooking or something. 
And she's like, oh, my God, it was unbelievable doing the walkthrough in SoFi Stadium. And he's like, oh, my God, I can't imagine. I'm so excited to do the white party in SoFi Stadium. <laughs> so he listened to you. You didn't say the walkthrough on the actual turf. Yeah, he didn't say it was on the field. And quite, SoFi there are Stadium's t- big. And by the way, there are many parties in Los Angeles that happen in parking lots. They tent parking structures all the time. All the time. Don't so, come for parking lot parties when you're talking to a Texan. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, we live in not. parking lot parties, okay? <laughs> he doesn't know. Also, he doesn't care. And by the way, that should tell you something about how much he doesn't care. Because by the way, you know what? You wouldn't even have this issue. You just had it in your backyard in the first place. Then he'll know exactly where it is. He knows where it is. You just spent 400 grand. Yeah. That was his money, too. So <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to. I don't think you're allowed to spend 400 grand. That's half of your partner's money. And then tell your partner <laughs> that they're an asshole. They just threw you. They just helped throw you a 400 grand dollar party. OK, and who's yeah. Santiago, by the way, stirring up this shit. This is ridiculous. Santiago better get his ass fucking fired, too. Yeah. Santiago. Santiago. Santiago probably added Mauricio cheating. Can a man not cheat me more in peace? Yeah. No, this is. Kyle, like the fact that Kyle is using this as evidence <laughs> for, to evidence for why their relationship is fractured and um, you know <laughs> they have irreparable differences is because he thought the party was at in the parking lot when it's actually on the field is hilarious to me. Kyle, who's this party is not about her, and yet if you don't remember exactly how much money she spent on it and how extravagant it is, she's going to divorce you. So then, well, also it's the season finale, so I just need more. Like, we've been waiting the whole season for this episode. And you're like, and here it all comes down to him not knowing the party wasn't in a parking lot. I'm like, come on, dude. Okay, so Denise is now talking with Sutton about Erica's performance. And uh, Denise is like, so Erica's performing? She goes, yes, she is. What is she performing? Cher's greatest hits, Denise. That's what we think. Uh, That would be an improvement. Well, I don't know if you know this, but Aaron actually can turn back time. Just use some magnets. It's really powerful. And listen, Cher doesn't turn back time. You know what does? 5G. <laughs> 5G. <laughs> Big Pharma turns back time, so you better watch out. <laughs> Dinosaurs will be roving the earth again. Okay, so backstage, Erica's getting ready for her big debut at SoFi. And Mikey's like, okay, everyone, we've not done a prayer like this in five years. Okay, so let's get back. It is time to pray. Everybody pray, pray. And Erica's like, all right, listen here, motherfucker up there in your goddamn white jacket and your long-ass robe that you refuse to groom. Now, listen, I'm not going to say anything about your balls hanging down to the ground anymore because you're rich. You're rich as fuck. But listen here, I'm doing this here show and I want a sack of money when I'm done. You got it? Either that or you're going to lose your knees. You and your son, too. <laughs> I hate what these last few years have done to me. God, do you know at one point someone came in with a wire on and had the Secret Service set on me and I went to jail and lost my, nearly lost my entire company for five years? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, that's what I did to someone. Still didn't like it, though. Whatever. Tough times for me. What the world, what the years have done to you. That is hilarious um i don't know are those years still wearing the earrings that they bought with your victim fund (laughs) you fucking asshole so we have a montage of erica's tough times and she goes you know there were a lot of times that i quit i quit caring about how i looked i quit caring about what i ate i quit trying to work in a third note into my repertoire but you know what i thought i wasn't gonna perform again i mean who how who? Where? Why? At what time? What location? With him at who else? Do you have GPS coordinates? <laughs> For who's? For whence? Um, listen, Erica, I'm glad you're having a moment, okay? But when she said that line, I quit caring how I looked. I quit caring about what I ate. I quit caring what people think about me. Dude, I go to therapy to get to this point. Why is she acting like this is the worst thing that's ever happened? I've been reading self-help books since I was in the third grade trying to figure out how to get to that point. You were winning. 
Erica saying, yeah, quit caring about how I looked because it was so tough. Let's just rewind to last season. Well, no one gets to tell me how I spent my money. I don't have a lot of money, but if I want to spend my money my glam team because I want to look good, then I want to look good. So, yeah, you really sound like you quit how you cared how you looked. <laughs> so, um, they're like, okay, one on three, pretty mess. One, two, three, pretty mess, honey. Isn't it funny so, how Mikey always looks like he just had a popsicle? And I'm not even trying to make an innuendo there. It always looks like he just had some sort of cherry popsicle, right? Is that just me? Cherry popsicle. <laughs> you know, his mouth is always sort of like red. Red, like it's like, hold on, let me just, uh, I'm just finishing some Italian ice. Okay, okay, I'm ready for the prayer circle now. <laughs> Little uh, tinted gloss there. Yeah. I've been thinking about tinted gloss. Mostly because I found a really good watermelon flavored one, and I love the oh, flavor. Like but I'm lip gloss? essentially eating. I'm essentially eating the glass because, like, I put it on my lips, and then I just keep licking my lips, and I'm kind of chewing my lips. And then before you know it, I've got like little bite marks in my lips, and I'm just like putting on. A, it gets addictive, you know. I don't think that's for people with eating ish. Is that why he is? Is that why it's it's so red? Is that I'm why Mike's mouth is so red? I mean, I haven't noticed it, but I'm assuming that you're saying if it's always red, it's probably. I would guess like a lipstick or a tinted lip gloss or something. Uh, yeah, that actually. God, makes I'm hungry sense. for tinted lip gloss now. Sounds you know delicious. I have my lip gloss I'm going to open up a tinted lip gloss sandwich shop. <laughs> we don't use mayonnaise. We just use tinted lip gloss. Something it's about her be gloss. So good. Something about her gloss. I want to be rich as fuck. Okay, so um, Erica comes out to do her show. At, well, first Kyle gives a speech, and it's you know, um, it's weird. Camille was she- here. Yeah, Camille was there. Camille made a whole entrance oh with her gosh. daughter. And Kyle goes, hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. Welcome. Look at this sea of gorgeous people. Oh, hi, Camille. We haven't said hi yet. Yeah, I just want to announce to everyone that you're so low on my priorities right now that I'm not even going to say hello to you person to person. I'm just going to wait till I'm on a stage and you're not, which is quite frequent since I'm often performing as a working actress. Anyway, hi, Camille. Good to see you. Well, welcome to our white party. We need a little entertainment. So I brought one of my good friends, the talented, the amazing, the fantastic. Watch your purses, ladies. It's Erica Jane. So then, um, Eric, so er, this is, I don't, I'm curious how they stage this because Erica had to come out from like a tunnel. So you have to see her walking across and then she gets into this like little box thing. They rotate the box. It's like a reveal. There's Erica Jane. But we also had just walked, watched her walk across the field. It's sort of a strange logistical thing. So she does it and she's like, my pussy's like a python. I got the python. It's expensive to be me. It's expensive to be back. I can't believe you forgot the first lyric because I say that first lyric all the time. My pussy's like a python, tick ticking like a time bomb. Oh, yeah. What's in your pussy? What is in there? After all these years, <laughs> we have not found out what is in her pussy. You cannot just be walking around with the ticking time bomb of a pussy. What's it, in there? I need to know. Literally the plot of Saw. <laughs> Once again, you have 24 hours to get this, get this python pussy out of me. Um, but you like, also know I can like, only do one lyric at a time. In the history of Watcher Crappens, have I ever been able to recite more than one lyric from a song before I have to go to the that, 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 that does? No. I just don't have the ability to remember lyrics. No, but you can remember specific um, Camille utterances for years on end. Yeah, but so that's because I feel like, like you should be able to grasp to... a lyric. <laughs> that's because the only thing she has to say is so upsetting. Yeah, it's so um, upsetting, right? So My pussy's upsetting. like a python. Python. And uh, like stick a ticking like a time bomb. Bomb. And it's, it's so <laughs> so Just for old all time sex. Expensive to be me lyrics. <laughs> I have to go over these lyrics. Okay. Uh, by the way, while you go with the, while you find those lyrics, mm, I will say I you know found who them. I, you know who I saw at the party? Who, Our new who friend Michelle Turner. Who just was at the Grammys. Oh, Michelle was there. What a lovely lady what that lovely was, lady. Michelle. She's, well, so she's nice. a good girl. Yeah, I yeah. really liked her. I liked her. So liked my her kid like is like a python, python. tick ticking like a time bomb. bomb. Limited edition, Limited gotta buy it with no try on. No try I purr on. just like a lion, lion. knock him out like mm-hmm. Tyson. Like Everybody Tyson. knows that knows I'm a million that. dollar million diamond. Dollar diamond, so <laughs> upsetting. <laughs> I love a good duet. That was beautiful. It was that was beautiful. like the Tony Bennett duets album. <laughs> okay. It was. So um, Kyle gives her speech. Okay. So Erica performs. Okay. 
<laughs> um. So and then Erica's like, if it's not, if it does not go right tonight, my God, the buzz, the momentum, it all comes to a screeching halt. The pressure's on. I'm like, okay, you're not at the Grammys. <laughs> you're yeah. So <laughs> you're, but, you're performing you know, for she's, Kyle. She's just full force with the delusion, and I think that that's how it works the best. You really can't go half-assed with delusion, and I think the whole cast has really. <laughs> really grasped that this year and they're going for it Sutton with her like I'm an independent working woman who just worked my way up from nothing like her storyline you've got the Erica pretending she's at the Grammys you know, know. you've got Clive the Kyle Davis calling paparazzi her. on herself pretending she's Julia Roberts I mean this shit's <laughs> hilarious I mean that being said I mean put aside everything we just learned from Housewife on the Hustler too uh, I think this is Erica's best season without a doubt like this is the first season I think I've ever like enjoyed it when she came on on screen like i thought she was funny and um she leaned into the villain thing in a way that i like so you know what she's allowed to have a little song and dance um in the context of this show in my mind at so far stadium suck that I, ginger rogers <laughs> i okay. did it fuck you taylor swift this is the erica show now <laughs> so then we go to the end of the season uh, stuff where everybody's talking, you know, they're into the season lines. And Dorit talks about um, her, she's learned that she has to deal with PK a lot more. Their relationship sucks. And I've got to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And oh, God, I just lost one of my soundproof tiles, oh, just no. flew in my head. So upsetting. So upsetting. Uh, PK came home from London after 39 days, but the real distance remains between Dorit and Kyle who haven't spoken since December. Ladies and gentlemen, Berlin, just one last time. Yeah, so Kyle's done with Dorit. I mean, they were really only friends to take down Vanderpump anyway. I'm surprised it lasted this long. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see, what else? Anne-Marie and Crystal. So we get Anne-Marie. She's like, looking back, I think that I need to understand that not everybody's going to get along on the same level. And like, I need to be okay with that. Like, some people just aren't going to be okay with me being a doctor. Hmm. And and then Crystal Crystal is accepting that her brother Jeff lives part time in Thailand and has a new girlfriend. And Crystal is finally admitted to Rob that he was right. And by the way, uh, then they show this like scene of like Crystal with her mom. This is clearly like a big emotional scene that was cut out. Her mom's like crying at the dinner table about Jeff moving away and like this like mom, it's okay. You did a great job raising us. You did a great job. I was like this. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it probably would have been a really boring scene to watch, but it, they just did kind of. Sh- do crystal dirty because oh my they just God, kind I of groaned. like they probably they just like <laughs> didn't even give like her story they didn't give her story they just like you know that she was telling people all her friends like you guys i know my story seems lame but there's like a really powerful scene coming up with my mom just wait just wait and that's just like five seconds worth at the <laughs> at the oh, end oh no of the i so groaned in morning. that even in that scene even in the blue because you know when they put those scenes in the blue they're like this scene wasn't a- previously in a scene that was cut because it was not interesting enough which is why we put it in blue and then it's the brother and he's like guys i just wanted to say just because i need to move away to have my own life doesn't mean i don't love you and i was like you're 50 just fucking go <laughs> you fucking go to bangkok go. go to bangkok so oh, i um, can't uh garcelle is you know it's the usual stuff with garcelle i mean there's literally always the same stuff i'm getting my kitchen redone and i'm a mother and I won an award. She did win an award for Black Girl Missing. And then we see Sutton falling off the dance floor. And she goes, oh, well, I did not see the stage right there. I mean, maybe that stage should be working instead of sitting at home in the movie eating bonbons like a typical rich sage would be. <laughs> I'll pick me up. She's like, when I first found out Christian was moving to London, that's when I said, people deserve unaffordable, crazy clothes to wear to parties they'd never be invited to. And that's when I started Sutton Store, <laughs> which has since grown into a huge conglomerate that is in one tiny little city <laughs> in one tiny little place <laughs> that is completely paid for by all of the things that I don't sell. Thank you. Leaflets. We got leaflets now. I went <laughs> to a place that called Staples, or Staples, not really sure how it's pronounced, and Avi printed out leaflets and put them in mailboxes in a two-block <laughs> radius. We are expanding. 
It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. You know what's the worst is when you are shopping online and you're so excited for everything in your cart and then you look and everything's going to arrive in like five weeks and you're like, why am I even doing this? And you just give up. I hate that. Don't you, Ronnie? Oh my God, I hate that. And also when it's so expensive. I mean, listen, shipping can make or break a sale. And as your business grows, ShipStation can help optimize how you ship your orders so you can stay competitive while you scale up. ShipStation is really great for all of this stuff. They've got a free trial and quick setup. It's really easy to try things out before you commit or get started right away. Their dashboard is so user-friendly. You can easily automate shipping tasks. You can manage orders in one simple dashboard. You know, one thing also that's really cool is that ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduce warehouse costs and improve profitability. And like, as your business grows, you can really just save thousands on shipping costs because of that. ShipStation has industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post with discounts up to 89% off USPS and UPS rates. Optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Use promo code CRAPPENS today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code CRAPPENS. The team at Hungry Root just sent me a new box. It's full of yummy stuff. This food is so delicious. You know, I'm really keeping it healthy these days, and it's super easy with Hungry Root. My personal favorite, love some grain bowls. I had a poke salmon bowl, delicious. I had a chipotle gouda grilled cheese for something a little more cash. Mmm. That sounds wonderful. Hungry Root is your partner in healthy living. It is the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality groceries and simple, healthy recipes delivered to your door. You can take a fun, short quiz, and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, the kitchen appliances you use, and more. And then they'll build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week and give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to good use. Save hours planning, shopping, and cooking. Hungry Root delivers food you will love. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Watch What Crappens listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Crappens to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash Crappens. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader, Like that car riding right your tail. Or if you're tailgating right now, all those cars doubling as kitchens and living rooms are on Auto Trader too. Are you working out and listening to this ad at the same time? Well, multitasking pro, cars like the ones in the gym parking lot are for sale on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. Okay, and who else do we have? I think that's mostly what we have. But then, after they take their group photo, we see one month later, dun, 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 and we get kind of the opening. Everybody's doing their thing around town. And um, Dorit, is, do they start? I thought they start. I remember them starting with Garcelle. It's the first one I remember where Garcelle's like, they, look at me, I'm packing things. I might possibly redo my kitchen, and I'm a mother. <gasps> Bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> Hold on, something's blooping in my pocket. It, I must look at it immediately. <gasps> Kyle Richards! <laughs> yes, and the date on this is July 20, 23rd, but this news broke on July 3rd, so the fact that they're all acting surprised when it's been 20 days already of this. What? What? So, uh, yeah, Kyle Richards and Mauricio Munsky have separated after 27 years of the best marriage known in humanity. And so then there's all these tweets, including one from our dear friend, Michelle Collins. Congrats, Michelle. You made it into the tweet, the tweet stack that they put on, on screen. Um, tweets about the cheating rumors. And what did Chris- her tweet say? Do you remember? I don't remember. You can't introduce me to a Michelle Collins tweet and not tell me what it well, is it was, so I can laugh I mean, uploriously. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put it no, up. don't look it up. Don't look I'm it up. No, it's no, going to no, take too no, long. No, no, no. You put me on the spot, and now I'm a bad friend. Now I'm a bad friend. No, you're not a bad friend. It was a long time ago. Come no, on, darling. No, no, let no. it go. We're going to look up. I've put the name Ben on the dance floor. Here hey. it is. Yeah. It says, Michelle Collins' oh. tweet is, sounds like Kyle saved a new contact under Love Bean. There we go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a good one. It was worth looking up. 
I dream to one day. As long as it's not a love bean shaped pool. Am I right, Ben? Christian Snow also got got his tweet up there. So good for Christian Snow. I hope that someday one of my pithy tweets makes it into the into onto the screen as well, but we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, Ben. I hope it for you. I'm praying for you. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I should just be happy with what I've got, which is a sweeter Peter Madrigal at the stop sign waving me to go forward. <laughs> yeah. You just want a Peter today. Let's not complain to I the want Lord a Peter. today. Okay, let's take a moment. Yeah. Can't so uh, Crystal, in a scene that made her and uh, Rob's place on this show steadfast, I hope, because this was amazing this and great. I need more of this in my life. <laughs> she's like, oh my God, an article came out today, Rob. Kyle Richards and Mauricio Omowski have separated after 27 years of marriage. And he goes, oh my God, it's in People? Oh, well, who leaked that? Who posted that? Okay, you want conjecture? Morgan told people that they were separated. I was like, yes, messy Rob. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is what I think happened, okay? Morgan, he, she's upset. She just had a fight with her mom. Her mom says, you're not doing anything with your life. She says, well, okay, well, you want to see what I'm doing with my wife? I'm banging a very wealthy person who's on TV. She calls up People Magazine. People Magazine doesn't believe her, so she secretly records someone. And then she plays Circle of Life while she and Kyle are doing it on the kitchen floor. Rob, you are now... Way into director mode. This is not happening, Rob. He's like, okay, this is what happened. So Morgan is new on the scene, right? So Kyle thought that people were going to murder her because she's so popular. So she like kind of hit her away. But then um, everything got out of control. She didn't get to become the king. It's like, uh, Rob, you've made that movie twice. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Here's what happens. Okay. So Kyle, dissatisfied, leaves Mauricio, goes away for about 10 years or so, comes back. Now she's a teenager. She has two friends who say, just hang out, don't be wild. But now she wants to come over and take over the agency. That's just the same version of what you literally just told me two seconds ago. (laughs) Okay, okay, here's what it is. So Morgan is a hooker, (laughs) and then Kyle got the hooker. And then on the anniversary, they called Berlin. Wait a minute, why are you calling me into this? (laughs) Denise okay. was the one not wearing white at the party. Okay, Kyle. Okay, get this, get this, get this. Kyle is on a family trip on a boat. She goes overboard and she sees Morgan Wade underwater. Years later, they reunite. Morgan Wade was a mermaid. Now she's on land. Now she's eating lobster through the shell. But then they find out about her. She has to go back to the ocean. I think you're just doing splash now. I think. I think so. Yeah. Can you imagine opening your trunk and Morgan Wade's in there? It's like, ha, ah, sorry, I, I was just hiding that in your trunk. I hope that's okay. You like shrimp? I like shrimp. Okay, so then uh, we go to Anne Marie's house, and Anne Marie's like, oh my God, the People Magazine exclusive? Did that come from Kyle? That's nuts. It's like a way to like maybe get ahead of what everyone else was saying about Kyle. Like, that's crazy. Yes, it came from Kyle, of course. <laughs> Anne Marie, Anne Marie may be the most annoying one here, but. She knows how this works already. Of course yeah. it was Kyle. Rob, of I can't course. believe you thought it was it was Morgan. It was Kyle. It was 100% Kyle. And so Sun and Garcelle are FaceTiming, and Sun's like, this did not happen overnight. Yes, I know, like a marriage falling apart. No, not Kyle. I'm talking about the success of Sutton. This was an important business for all of America. Well, did you hear that Kyle and Mauricio broke up? Oh, well, sure, fine. We want to talk about that. That's fine, too. You know what I should have called my store? You know, people people say, what's your store? I say, call Sutton. Why'd you name it that? Because I'm Sutton. And, you know, but were people that stupid? You know what I should have named it? Canary in a coal mine, because I told you about this shit months ago. Nobody believed me. <laughs> I mean, we got tattoos. We got exercising. We got not drinking. We got missing a wedding band. We got just sort of just being more generally annoying than usual. I mean, she was definitely cheating. Yep, and so they're like, she was, she goes, this was sus. She's like, oh, it was sus? She goes, which part? She goes, the whole thing. And Garcelle's like, holy shit, Sutton knows what sus is. <laughs> so then one day later, Kyle's online message, she released a statement. And she's like, um, in regards to news about news that came out to us today, nothing's true, nothing's happened in my marriage, and, um, you know, we're just going through stuff, but, like, nothing happened, nobody did anything, okay? 
So please stop saying that I've broken the internet because th we're having a very private moment right now. And the last thing I want to happen is to be known as the woman who broke the internet in 2023 for divorcing. One of the saddest crumblings of a relationship we've seen in all of this year. Please, please stop saying that. I'm just trying to have a private moment. Hashtag Scandal Kyle. <laughs> Uh, so then she is talking about how <laughs> this when is the a People very Kyle magazine... thing. Sorry, Kyle goes. Go ahead. She tells us when the People magazine article came out, I was with Mo and the girls, and all of our phones just started blowing up. And Mo was just like really focused on who gave the story, and I was more focused on how is it affecting all of us. So of course, Kyle the right. hero. Yes, Mauricio only cared about the publicity. Whereas Kyle cared about the children. Kyle only does it for the children. Classic Mauricio. He thinks the party's in the parking lot and cares about the publicity. God, yep. I'm so checked out. Exactly. So um, she's like, I mean, like, it just felt like my whole life was over in that moment. You know. <sighs> so Erica comes over to comfort Kyle um, because Kyle forced Erica to do it on camera with her last season. So Erica's like, yeah. I guess I could return the favor. And now let's watch Erica try to turn this whole thing into her set, her own story. <laughs> so she sits down and she's like, Kyle, I know what it's like, Kyle. I was once with a man who couldn't make it to the bathroom without tripping over his nuts too, Kyle. I know what it's like. Exactly the same thing. You know what? And by the way, first off, I want to say one thing. Because now this is what Erica... So since Erica doesn't actually know what empathy is, as she explained earlier in the season, and this is her biggest test of trying to show empathy, when Erica tries to show empathy, she does this thing where she speaks in short clipped words. First of all, I would like to say one thing. I feel like I kind of almost semi need to acknowledge and apologize for the fact that I have not been the most observant friend, because at the dinner table, I literally did not know that there were issues with you and Mauricio, and for that... If I did anything, if I was not attentive in any sort of way, then I apologize for that. <laughs> she does get like that. She does. She <laughs> but when like, she gets really like mad, cow. she gets like that too. I love it. <laughs> if there was she, something that I was about to enunciate <laughs> so they could heal me in the back <laughs> of the house. She becomes a dot matrix printer. If there was something Red that I missed or something I have not been the most attentive at all, then I am very sorry about that. <laughs> So Kyle's like, there wasn't anything to do because like, I mean, we've been like dealing with things privately. So uh, I mean, I just like, look, I guess I just feel bad and like, t you know, talking about all this stuff. Cause I mean, like, <laughs> I just think the hardest part of what we're going through is that there's not just like one huge thing. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's not just one huge thing. You can't just point to one thing and say, that's it. Therefore, there is. And thus I made my decision, Kyle. But you know what? I kind of feel like a bad guy. You know, you kind of feel like a bad guy, don't you, Kyle? Just like I did when Tom Tenderman did all those things to me. It's just like there are all these things that I've been, like, needing and wanting from my marriage that, you know, I just can't get since that article came out. You know, I think it all started when I got rid of my bangs. And now it's like I'm seeing, oh, like, oh, obviously it's because Mo cheated or now it's like I cheated. Or like, oh, like everyone's saying Mauricio should have known the party was in the stadium, not the parking lot. Like, it's crazy. And what is the truth with the cheating? The cheating rumors. And she's like, um, there's literally nothing to do with anybody else. I mean, it's nothing to do with anybody else. I just don't want anybody thinking Mo cheated on me because Mo absolutely did not cheat on me. I'm like, wow, you're gonna just like... What's the big... I get that there's pride involved here, but this is Kyle, and Kyle cannot be such a fucking hypocrite. Like, is she really this hypocritical after all these years of just own it and forcing everybody to do everything on camera? Especially with Erica last year. She was forcing yeah. Erica to do this shit all year. Come on. Yeah, and it's like... I, I, I find it... I feel like with normal people, I would never pry into, like, what went, what went wrong. But with... A reality star who's willing to put her daughters on camera and like have a very, as we'll soon see, a very, you know, intense and emotional scene with the daughters and then have cameras in their faces and then all of a sudden say like, no, this is a private thing. I don't want to talk about it. I just I'm like, well, what what is the lie between public and private for Kyle? I just don't understand it. 
Right. Like she gives me enough that I feel like I, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to find out like the real truth about what happens. But then she withholds at the last second every single time. Well, she's also a throw a rock and hide your hand kind of person. So I think a lot of it is that she wants to insinuate things so that people make it a lot worse in our heads than it really is. You know what I mean? Because I heard from our old queen in a bar um, what it was, was that she, and we heard this on the show later. This is not like, you know, brand new information. But I heard it was because she found DMs, like he had been been DMing like some hot Instagram thoughts or whatever. And so that's kind of what started the spiral. But by not saying that, if she said that, it would maybe sound too like, well, it wasn't an actual affair if it was just texting. You know, people could jump to that, which to me, it still is an affair, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. But um, other people could say, well, that's not technically an affair. But if she says like, well, things happened that make me lose trust. Then we're left to be like, oh, okay. So he cheated with 19 women, you know? Right. <laughs> Probably his daughter's age. And, you know, she lets it, she just like puts enough out there to let it marinate and let people go fucking crazy with it. Right. And, and yet, I mean, when you think about it, in Erica's defense, in many ways, like Kyle's like, be open and honest. Like she's, part of this group at one point at least superficially that's like you have to say what happened which would could imperil erica's legal case so she is kyle has not been above trying to pry out personal information from people to put on tv so that's why i guess i don't feel as bad about being like super nosy and saying well what the fuck happened tell us now i know in real life you there's children that are involved and their lives are impacted so i know why you don't want to be messy but it's just it's frustrating because she goes there with other people but when it comes to her she doesn't do it right well and also she it's the way that they leverage it for publicity for themselves it's really gross because you know, you had the whole Scandal thing breaking. So then she picked up cameras after that happened to try and like do the comp competition with Scandal to make this all happen. She's calling the paparazzi on herself. And then she's refusing to talk about it the whole show. But then the preview for Mauricio's show just came on for Netflix. And by the way, Bravo must be furious mm -hmm. because Mauricio's show, they talk all about it. The whole preview is him sitting with the girls and the girls are crying and he talks right. about the whole thing. So it's like this whole season was just teeing up that show that nobody watched. So they're obviously doing it to drum up publicity for both shows. And mm -hmm. it's just gross. It's just fucking gross. Like, you can't really feel for somebody when they're leveraging, you know, they're still living together and they're just completely leveraging the storyline for their own shows. It's gross. And I'm still not going to watch your stupid Netflix show. It was a piece of shit. I watched 30 minutes show. of it and it was terrible. And I love terrible Unwatchable. shows. Come Unwatchable. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I believe it's a. I believe this is a real, a true, you know, crumbling of a marriage. And I don't think you're doubting that the marriage is falling apart either. Um, but yeah, there's something you're just like, I don't know. I'm Kyle. kind of doubting it. You are? You think I'm doubting. I don't, I don't think that they're faking it. Like they're really in love and they're just faking this whole thing. But I think they've probably been grown apart for a long time and they're making it a huge drama to mm. get ratings. I think yeah. they're probably just fucking bored with each other and they maybe they've been sleeping around or doing whatever or have an arrangement or whatever they have. But I think they're just like, how do we leverage this for our shows, you know? Yeah. I mean I will say that there is there are a lot of complicated factors going on, which is why I think I want to know more information because you have the factors that deal with like she has her old fucked up family, you know, her dynamics with her sisters and the pressures they put on each other and you know, and he has a complicated relationship with her family. So that's there's that. There's issues with Morgan Wade, there's rumors about DMs, there's, you know, the like what has she been going through and what sort of support did she receive after you know her friend died you know so there's like so many things going on and um and again in real life none of us are entitled to know what really happened because that's between them and that's their relationship and and their their kids involved but it's tv and i'm like i don't know like i just want to know
I don't know. She's the messiest one with everybody else. So yeah, yeah. we are entitled to know because it's exactly TV. not she's that I messy. really give a fuck, but I just mean for the sake of the TV show, you don't get to just be vague the whole time after you're miss open and honest. You waste everybody's season with your vague bullshit, and then you try and do this Morgan Wade stuff on the side. It's just like while she's trying to sell her and work as her manager, it's just too gross. It's just too gross. She's it's just too slimy one -one. to feel anything. Like I can't feel empathy for somebody who seems to just be a plastic person with no feelings. You know. It's gross. It there just will seems be, all made up to me. There will be a one-on-one -on -one with Andy Cohen, I'm sure. Oh, so, sure. Um, so anyway, Kyle's She'll saying... She'll finally get her revenge on Kim for getting her one-on-one. -on -one. Right. So, Kim, let's talk about you stealing all that stuff from a Target store. And Kim's like, oh, I wasn't really stealing it. I was just taking it to my car and shopping cart before I paid for it, Andy. <laughs> So Kyle's saying that Mauricio is the type of person that likes to pretend everything in life is okay, um, which makes it really hard for her sometimes. And Erica's like, yeah, all the time. I'm like, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great. That's what I was told if you want to, uh, I don't know, talk about my marriage crumbling, because I, I feel like I didn't really get to talk about that enough. It's like, no, no, it's my scene. You know, when we first met, you know, like, we, re we were really opposites, like, complete opposites, and that worked, right? You know, like, I would always joke and say, if it wasn't for me, he would be dead, because I keep him safe, and if it weren't for him, you know, I would never take chances in life, and if it weren't for me, I also, like, wouldn't be in Halloween, but, you know, that's raw talent. That has nothing to do with him. Just want to remind everyone. <laughs> So they just, you know, kind of go back and forth on this. She's like, you know, uh, my marriage used to be admirable and we've been together for so long and I'm just not proud of it right now. And she's like, why? Because you're human? Because you have talent? Because you want to sing for wings? <laughs> and Kyle's like, no, because I've just let down so many people. I mean, I've let, it's let down for me, for him, for the kids, for people I don't even know. I mean, it's for the audience. It's for the fans. Complete letting strangers. down the fans. Complete strangers come up to me and say, we looked up to you guys. You made us believe in true love. Can I have your autograph? You were so wonderful in ER. Complete strangers all day. So she's like, there's only two people in this marriage and everyone else can fuck off. How about that? You got to make yourself happy. You've raised these girls. You've been a good wife to this man. You're a great sister. You're a great daughter. Hell, they had your name on SoFi Stadium the other day in my gig. <laughs> You do so many things so well, with the exception of cooking salmon and going through your mail. You are a champion. <laughs> but what, what if we can't work it out? One week later, family meeting. So uh, Kyle and Mauricio are in the kitchen, and he has this he has this like fake smile on his face like yeah everything is totally fine everything is fine like this is not awkward at all hey hey what are you doing are you making tea ha <laughs> ha natural banter between us am i the only one who's like totally fine with acting like everything's okay it's not what you do <laughs> what am i supposed to do come in crying every day <laughs> so uh, that's, that's how I live my life. We're going to be fine. Everything's great. So she's like eating candy. Where are you going? And he's like, we're opening a new office in Panama. And she goes, yeah. And I guess you have to show your face. He's like, yeah. Or so now teeth. <laughs> you'll know you get there when you have to squint your eyes because the light coming off of my teeth is so bright. <laughs> Things have been a lot more uncomfortable with Mo and me ever since the article came out. I think because it just made it so much more real. And it trended so high on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like my kids have basically lived a fairy tale with many dogs in it. And then I felt like this article came out. And they thought that the rug and the neon sign had been pulled out from underneath them because things are worse than we let on to be. And I just felt so bad to, to let them down because we really did have an amazing marriage for so long. And he's like, well, at least it's you, you know, that they're saying is cheating. And she goes, yeah, for once it's me. And he just gives this look like, what? Like hurt. <laughs> oh. He gives that Maurizio look that he's given in every scene this season where he shows up like, hey, love bean. And then by the end, he's like, <laughs> why is she torturing me like this? Does she not like me anymore? He's always surprised when he catches a stray from her. But it's not really a stray. It's just a full on <laughs> cannonball. Oh, yeah. oh, wasn't expecting it. Oh, man. So they sit the girls down in the living room and give them the talk. And um, she's like, well, we just wanted to talk about, you know, all this stuff that's come out, you know, my projects, basically. 
So if anyone has any questions, no, you cannot meet Jamie Lee Curtis. It's not because she's not a nice person. She's literally busy, still working. So <laughs> I know it's been a tough time. Um, we all, I know you had to find out the news the hard way in Variety to find out that my project about loungewear was unfortunately not moving forward at Peacock. But um, we're going to get through it together, guys. We'll get through it together. So, I mean, the most important thing is that we all work together and your mother refuses to come to the office or any parties in um, Brazil or Portugal, rather. So, fuck her and um, I win automatically, right? Okay, good. You all can keep your jobs. Yeah, we just want to have a very open conversation about how painful it can be when your husband does not remember that a party is on a field and not in a parking lot. So if there's anyone Okay, who wants to okay, talk about okay. That, That's uh, enough. Listen, girls, I would like to welcome you to this parking lot to have this conversation. Dad, this is your office. All oh, right. You see? I get it confused. I think things are parking lots. What? Yeah. Listen, what? I I know you guys were blindsided. Uh sort of like uh how Kyle claimed she was blindsided when she came into my office one day and saw that I'd put little mini basketballs on top of candlesticks by the fireplace and said, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> Speaking of, do you remember the time your mom saw Sandra Bullock in first class and then came home and tried to adopt a football player? <laughs> that shit was hilarious. So, speaking of blindsided, I brought some shades for you all since we will be addressing your father and you have to see his teeth. <laughs> okay, okay. Sandra Bullock aside. I just wanted to make sure we're open and honest with you guys. She goes, yeah, guys. And like, we haven't even talked about divorce, okay? So like, obviously we're no strangers to rumors in this family. Okay, but are they rumors? You can't even play this game with your own kids. You can't <laughs> do that to your own kids. She's like, guys, you're gonna have to tune in in two weeks to find out what happens on Netflix. <laughs> so Sophia's like, well, yeah, there's always been rumors and they always seem to come out of nowhere, but this time you guys have been having a hard year, so it was sort of hit different. And then Alexia's like, well, maybe this isn't a good opportunity to ask you guys, like, but what do you guys plan to do in terms of your relationship? Like, what happens now? And Kyle's like, well, the fact is, we are so busy and we are working. I am pitching a TV show um, to TV Land about what it was like to own a store for two years. And so that's going to take up a lot of my time. So we're going to work through, uh, you know, we have a little space while we work through stuff. And they're like, so you're going to take more space? And Sophia's like, yeah, you need more space to work through it. And she's like, well, we're, we're doing this. Uh, we're going to live under the same roof. And uh, right. Uh, no, and he's like, no, no, no not no. necessarily. I mean, and she's like, um, <laughs> that was not what we practiced. So, well, <laughs> I guess what I was trying to say is, well, what I meant by that is, uh, uh. How does Camille do it, Mauricio? Okay, I'll start it off. What a well, uh, your mother and I, we yeah, are like we're gonna we are working. Your mom. Uh, sometimes yeah, like I'll be in the house. Work. Sometimes she'll sometimes be in the like house. I'll be, yeah, um, I'll be there. I'll or be flossing like, my new teeth. You know, like I'm opening I'm up like, an office in Panama, yeah, right. uh, Angola, oh, Panama. Mm -hmm. uh, Bhutan, yeah. uh, uh, also uh, also Maine. Yeah. Uh -huh, Northern right, Maine. Maine. That's a place. That's a, yeah. that's a city. Uh, that's a city to, that I'm going to maybe stay it's, in. Uh, it's actually a state. It's so I'm actually buying all of Maine. Upsetting. So Maine is turning into a, just one big office for the agency. Yeah. <laughs> so um, she's kind of trying to stutter through this, but also not telling them anything. Like, why are you going to sit them down and have a talk with them and not tell them? Are you guys separating? Are you getting a divorce? You can't do this to them. These are your kids. Tell them. So Mauricio's like, oh, poor she, what's wrong? Come here. And Kyle's like, no, I will go to her because I'm, I'm, she likes me better. So she goes over and takes care of Portia, who's crying, Portia. which is super sad, I mean, you know? I mean, this is such an intense conversation to have. And um, it's like, I, I kind of, I felt awkward in, so, in certain ways. I feel like I should not have been watching it. Isn't it funny? I'm like, I want to know all the answers, but I also feel like something like this, I don't know. I feel like this is probably a very painful thing. And now it's like, there for Porsche to see when Bravo runs their marathons for the next 10 years, you know? So I don't know, but I, I felt really terrible for, her, especially Porsche cause she's the youngest. Well, I feel bad for, you know, I feel, you know, you always feel bad for the kids and stuff. So, of course. um, so she's crying and Kyle's like, um, you know, we're not broken. We're just bent very, very, very bent, but we're a strong family and we always will be. 
And so she tells the producers, like, I'm finally realizing there's a chance that we might not end up together. Yeah. And the producer finally says, what is this issue that you cannot let go of? And she says, there were things that happened that made me lose my trust. I wasn't able to recover from. So her last line is insinuating that he was in fact cheating, which she still made everybody wait for the whole year and didn't just fucking say if he's cheating or not cheating. But it actually, could, so, it actually could mean a multitude of things. It actually doesn't even have to mean cheating, but it's You don't it's think vague. that she purposely said that to mean cheating? I mean, what else would it insinuate, you know? Right. Well, I think I agree. Like, because it could be something like he wasn't there for me when I needed him the most because he was too busy doing this or that. And, um, but by phrasing it that way, it definitely makes it sound like he cheated for sure. Right. So we'll see. I mean, I don't know, but it is kind of annoying that we have to supposedly watch this Netflix show to find out, which I will not be I'm doing. Not do that. So good luck to you. Um, also, we see some clips from the. Oh, we see like a mo we see moments of like Kyle and Mauricio's love putting that lock on the bridge of Paris, which I think ended up crumbling the bridge. Right? Didn't the bridge crumble they the had, next year? I think they had to take the they had to take that fence down, or maybe yeah. put up a new one or something like that. So too heavy. that was a bad It was plan. the Kyle lock. Kyle. So yeah, so we saw like flashbacks through the years of them loving each other. And you really do see how strained the relationship was this year. I mean, we noticed it all season long, but looking at these flashbacks, you saw how much levity they had and how happy they genuinely seemed to be to see each other and be around each other. And this season, it really was so awkward. And it wasn't just editing. It wasn't just musical cues. It was, it was actually pretty tough to watch. Um, this this awkwardness between them, but I guess we'll find out what happens. There are going, you know, like obviously they also mention on this that that Kyle and Kathy reconciled in time for Whitney's wedding. That's Kim's daughter, and then they show uh, headlines of Mauricio skiing with Anita, um, and so from Dan who's just was, in a towel in the snow. Ooh. Ooh. So, so then Kyle's like, I just want to be at peace. Am I done? And they're like, You're finally done, Kyle. Your watch is over. And she's like, ah, and she starts crying. Um, so that's the end of that. We still have a month of reunions. Um, so we'll be here reunioning it up for the next. I, and I love, by the way, I mean, this is like the Kyle season. <laughs> and then they bring Kathy in for the reunion. <laughs> and all people care about again is Kathy. It's like, up, <laughs> upstaged again. Upstaged yeah. again. All right. Yep, well, so there you go, everybody. Uh, the reunion looks pretty fun. Uh, Dorit's dressed crazily. <laughs> Dorit is, Dorit is doing a look, and Sutton is having some sort of attack. Sutton's like trembling, making noises in the corner, and he's like, "Wow, ah, she's really, really quivering. Oh, wow." So we'll see what happens there. It'll be fascinating, and I love the set. By the way, the set looks great. So, anyway. Thank you all so much for being here. We still have Real Housewives of Miami and we have Summer House coming your way. So our week continues to forage on. Be sure to get tickets to whatever shows you want to go to. Hopefully all of them. Be us, the superest of the super fans. Watchacrappers.com for all that. And we will catch you on the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. 
Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kutar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. <laughs> From Wondery, this is Black History for Real. I'm Francesca Ramsey. And I'm Conscious Lee. What do most <laughs> people think about when they hear the words Black History? Rosa Parks, Reconstruction, MLK, February, Black History Month. Exactly, Mom. exactly. There are so many stories of Black History that we just are not really talking about or thinking about, especially outside of February. And we are about to flip the script on all of that. Because on this show, you're going to hear a little less. In August 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And a little bit more. She is a heroine to some. As a fighter for black rights, she is a villain to others. Follow Black History for Real on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Listen everywhere on February 5th, or you can listen early and ad-free on Wondery Plus starting January 29th. Join Wondery Plus on the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Academy is a new scripted podcast that follows Ava Richards, played by HBO's Industries' Myhala Herald, a brilliant scholarship student who has to quickly adapt to her newfound eat-or-be-eaten world. Ava's ambitions take hold and her small-town values break in hopes of becoming the first scholarship student to make The List, Bishop Gray's all-coveted academic top 10, curated by the headmaster himself. But after realizing she has no chance at the list on her own, she reluctantly accepts an invitation to a secret underground society that pulls the strings on campus life and academic success. If she bends to their will, she'll have everything she's ever dreamed of. But at what cost? Academy takes you into the world of a cutthroat private school where power, money, and sex collide in a game of life and death. Follow Academy on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Academy early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus.